you know the Republicans have a problem when they can't defend their nominee for president of the United States and when questioned about it they dance around like a puppet on marionette strings. This particular clip uh, has to do with both Paul Ryan and uh, Senator McConnell and Ooh, I'm sorry, Representative uh, Michael Burgess when asked about uh, Donald Trump's behavior and they can't defend it but they won't criticize it. Comes just one day, in fact just a matter of hours since the lone remaining holdout among top Republicans, the most powerful Republican in the country, House Speaker Paul Ryan, finally climbed on board the Trump train. Trump is really and truly their guy now, leaving them no choice but to answer for his unanswerable statements. In a local radio interview today, Trump offered a fairly tepid condemnation of Trump's remarks to the Wall Street Journal. Comment about the judge the other day just was out of left field from my mind. It's, it's reasoning I don't relate to. I completely disagree with the thinking behind that. Um, and so I, he clearly says and does things I don't agree with. And, and I've had to speak up on time to time when that has occurred, and I'll continue to do that if that's necessary. I hope it's not. Well, Paul Ryan, you better get used to uh, making uh, statements like this because it doesn't appear that Donald Trump is going to stop. Similarly, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell displayed only mild disapproval, remarking that he's, quote, unfamiliar with this particular judge. What I am willing to say is that Donald Trump is certainly a different kind of candidate. Is he wrong in attacking the Mexican background some generations back of this very highly regarded judge who's uh, won cases against the, the uh, drug cartel? I'm unfamiliar with this particular judge, but I did say the other day, and I'll say... You don't have to be familiar with the judge. You're familiar with the subject matter because it's been all over the news. So unless you had your head uh, stuck in a hole in the ground, you've heard about the controversy, but you just don't want to answer it. Again today, I thought it was completely un <clears throat> unfortunate, unnecessary for the, our nominee to attack the uh, governor of New Mexico, Susana Martinez. I think these. Uh, Attacks don't serve the candidate very well at this point. Uh, we ought to be trying to unify. He ought to be trying to unify the party behind him. Behind the scenes, however, concerns about Trump's racialized attack on a federal judge are mounting. This afternoon, NBC News correspondent Katie Torr reported Trump aides not happy with Trump's attack, attack on Judge Curiel's impartiality, telling me these are the things that will defeat us. Joining now, Congressman Michael Burgess, Republican from Texas, who has endorsed Donald Trump. Congressman, thanks for being here. Um, let me start with this. Do you believe that Judge Curiel, because he is of Mexican heritage, uh, should recuse himself or is incapable of being unbiased as a federal judge because of his ethnicity? Burgess is going to duck and dodge every question that he's asked, even the straight out yes or no uh, questions. And uh, when he can't absolutely dodge him, he's going to deflect uh, into uh, other areas. Well, look, uh, Chris, <coughs> first off, no surprise, I agree with Paul Ryan. The remark was kind of on left field. But let me just say, I know nothing about this lawsuit. It's a private matter. Uh, sure, I got to wonder why it, it wasn't settled prior to the presidential campaign, but apparently uh, the principal of the lawsuit feels he has a good chance to win. So uh, I think that needs to be litigated in the courts. That's where it belongs. Sure, but it doesn't belong on television. Okay. Uh, well, let me ask you this. I just want to get straight on this. Regardless of the merits of the case, the argument that the candidate of your party, the man who you've endorsed and you will vote for, is making is that due to the ethnicity of this specific judge, it renders him incapable of giving unbiased judgment. Do you agree with that principle? Well, look, I don't know enough about the case to really give you an answer. Okay, but that wasn't the question. See, he's deflecting because he doesn't want to answer the question. I'm asking about the principle well, what I, what of a man know, having a heritage what, being... Well, what, let's, you know, let's, let's kind of stick to the issues at hand. I mean, it has been... It has... Okay, and the issue at hand was, do you believe, as your nominee does, that uh, the heritage of the judge... Uh, will have an effect 
on how he uh, handles this particular case. That was the issue at hand. Mr. Burgess is going to try to change the issue. It's been an odd week for both candidates. I think we'll, we'll both agree on that. And for the people who want to write Donald Trump's political obituary, I mean, the highway is littered with the carcasses of people I, who've I am just, done that over I, the past year. Congressman, I'm really just asking a very simple question about the federal judiciary, its role, and federal judges. You're, the man who you are going to vote for for president, the nominee from your party who you have endorsed, has said that this man is incapable of doing his job as a federal judge because of his ethnic heritage. Do you agree with that? First off, I, I don't really think that's what Mr. Trump said, but... I... Bullshit! That's exactly what he says, and you know it, but you're just saying that so you can try to get away from this. Hey, Chris, I know nothing of the merits of the lawsuit. I, I just... Again, he's going back to the merits of the lawsuit. That's not the issue here. The issue here is Trump uh, jumping on the judge because of uh, his uh, Mexican heritage. And you are trying to make it into something else. It is uh, the merits of the lawsuit aren't, Trump. but the merits of the lawsuit aren't an issue. It is possible the judge has behaved terribly, or the lawsuit is totally without merit. The question is whether it is. The, the, whether it is Look, true that he cannot belongs, render the judgment it, it because be, of his ethnicity. No, Chris, it should be litigating the courtroom. Let's leave it at that. You and I don't know enough about this to render a judgment, I am not going to. The Congressman, I did not bring up this judge. I did not decide to start talking nor about Nor did Korea. I. Nor did I. And I told but, you, I agree with Paul Ryan. This but, thing is out of left field. Uh, I don't think it's one of the things that with, really the Trump campaign needs to be talking with, about right with, now. With, with due respect. Hillary Clinton yesterday giving a major foreign policy speech See, Chris Hayes needs to channel more of Chris Wallace and Chris Matthews and learn how to cut people off when they're sitting there filibustering, trying to get out away from a specific question that's asked. And Chris uh, Hayes hasn't developed that talent yet, and that's one that he definitely needs to. No one has called her about her 2002 vote for the authorization for use of military force in Iraq. Did she, re did she review the classified documents right. before she made that vote? Uh, Based Burgess. on those classified documents, why was that vote rendered? And then why was the policy pursued in 2011 sure. to withdraw from Iraq? I mean, none Congress. of this makes sense to me. Okay. We're, we're talking Congress. about what a great foreign policy speech she gave, but honestly, it's not, I, uh, yes. it's not something that's clear to me. Okay, uh, on Iraq. Uh, Chris just let this guy filibuster for about a minute on bullshit where he should have pulled him directly back into that question and not let him ramble on. I would, I would uh, commend your attention to the 2008 primary in which that was litigated extensively. It has been litigated extensively here. It's not that people have ignored that. I am not raising the issue of this Mexican-American judge's ethnicity out of left field, as Paul Ryan referred to it. In fact, the man who runs your party, who is going to be your nominee, started raising it back in February when he referred to the man as, quote, Spanish. He has repeatedly attacked a member of the federal Again, judiciary. Chris, I have no does participation in this lawsuit. Congressman, no does that trouble you? In this lawsuit. Does it trouble you? I'm asking, is it trouble you? There's a lot of things that have troubled me over the past year, but we are where we are. Donald Trump has won the votes of the majority of the Republicans, and he will be the nominee following the, the Cleveland Convention. And it's my intention to support him. But... You know, I'm all in for are Donald you, Trump. Are you proud of the way he's conducted himself as the presumptive nominee? Look, there's a lot of things I'm not proud of of this campaign on both. There we go again. He's not answering the question. Besides, are you proud of him? Are you proud of the but way that he's conducted himself? We are himself? where we are. Look, uh, I. It's a yes, it's a simple I question. Some, I want, I want someone who can win, and I believe Mr. Trump can do that. But that's not an issue. Okay, so he don't care what Trump does as long as he believes that Trump can win. That's basically the bottom line. The question, are you proud of the way he's conducted himself as the nominee for your party? Well, look, you know, again, there are lots of things that have troubled me over the last 12 months on I'm, both sides about how I'm this gonna, presidential campaign I'm going to take that as a I'm going to take that as a no. I'm going to take that as a no. I'm going to take that as a no. I'm never going to run for president. These are people who know a lot more about it than right. I do. I'm just a simple country doctor trying to do <laughs> the Lord's work in the United States House of Representatives. No, that's what you see that bullshit fallback. I'm just a simple country bumpkin and I'm trying to do the Lord's work. Yeah, right. This guy, and I've seen him in action before. This guy is devious, but it's a damn shame 
when you can't answer a, a simple question or choose not to answer a simple question because obviously you can't answer that question and he just is unwilling to criticize Donald Trump for any of his behavior and that's why the Republicans are going to lose. They've all drunk the Kool-Aid and they are all going to die a slow death. By Sarah Isker Flores, former deputy campaign manager for Carly Fiorina and Republican media strategist Rick Wilson, who vocally opposes, <laughs> vocally opposes Donald Trump. Uh, I, you know, this is going to be the next five months. I mean, again, look, I, will, I, I just want to be clear. I will, we're not raising this judge. No one in the media was talking about this judge or making him the center of this issue until Donald Trump made him the center of the issue. And to me, Rick, when you watch that interview with Jake Tapper, what is so evident is that he cannot help himself. He cannot help himself. Listen, this is a part of the bigger picture of Donald Trump is that he is not mentally fit to serve as president. The things that come out of his mouth, this is like political Tourette's. Everything he thinks he says, and that's not candor, that's lunacy. This is a guy who who is letting out the, the, you know, expressing this thing that turns on the id of a lot of his supporters right now by calling this guy a Mexican, saying that they look, oh, look at my African-American like the guy's a pet. He caught that too. As soon as I heard that, I was thinking the same thing, that uh, Trump was calling his quote-unquote African-American friend a, a, a pet or a slave, basically. And that totally pissed me off. I mean, this is a guy who is unfit for duty. He is unfit to be president. It's obvious, it's evident. It is painful to watch a, uh, someone like the congressman just now try to defend the indefensible. It is painful to watch rights blink out the word torture in Morris code when he's standing next to the guy. These are people who have compromised themselves so profoundly and they're gonna have to own every crazy word, every lunatic tweet, every racist statement out of this guy's mouth for the next five months. It's, it, they should be running for the hills but they've been in such fear of Trump's minions and Trump's craziness, and they're afraid of being put on blast by Donald Trump, that, that they're behaving like the, you know, the Stockholm Syndrome is real, and these guys are all, all stuck with it. Yeah, all these politicians, especially the ones that attacked him uh, during uh, the Republican debates and now are supporting him, they have no moral backbones. They know damn well that Trump is a goddamn lunatic and in the name of quote unquote party unity they're uh, basically coming to uh, support him no you don't compromise your principles to support someone who has no principles which is Donald Trump so hey Paul Ryan sold his soul Marco Rubio definitely sold his soul Ben Carson sold his soul Every last one of these guys that are supporting Trump, when they call them a lunatic, a liar, and, and every other name under the sun, and they absolutely believed it, and most of the people that were listening to him believed it too, now that they're supporting this guy, as far as I'm concerned, I have no respect for any of them. Sir, well, the context here also, aside from the, the fact that he is essentially saying this person's incapable of doing their job because he is, uh, because of his heritage, because of his ethnicity, there's also this, like, I think, somewhat troubling attack on the judiciary. I mean, you know, this is a person who will be appointing judges. In fact, the Republican Party is currently holding a judicial seat on the Supreme Court open for this man to appoint while he goes about in public laying waste to a member of the federal judiciary. You know, a lot of Republicans don't think that Donald Trump's a Republican, but they also believed that it was worth voting for him to save the Supreme Court. He put out that list of conservative judges that he sort of cobbled together from Heritage and the Federalist Society. It was a great list of judges. And what I think troubles a lot of people in the last day is that it now looks like he can't possibly appoint people from that list because he doesn't actually believe that that's the role of the judiciary. Uh, he's an authoritarian, and more to the point, though, this all plays into Hillary Clinton's hand. He can't have a referendum on Donald Trump and win. It has to be a referendum on Hillary Clinton. This was a huge opportunity for that's Republicans right. in this cycle, and mm -hmm. Republicans have blown it by nominating someone who is a liberal, just like Hillary Clinton, corrupt, just like Hillary Clinton, and she's going to make it a referendum on him. And 
we're going to lose that fight. Let, let me just say, as a, uh, I know you like to say that Donald Trump is a liberal, and we can get into a long definitional dispute, but I think whatever you want to call him, you can say he's not a Republican, though he's the nominee of the Republican Party. I think it's pretty clear he's not a liberal. Uh, he's an authoritarian. Okay, those, are big those are different so things. Donald Trump. He loves executive power. You can call power. him a status. Call him a status if you want to. Um, Rick, so you nodded about this, this sort of referendum question, and to me that was what the dynamic that has become so crystal clear just locked in the last 24 hours between Hillary Clinton's speech and today is Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are going to be cooperating on one goal, which is making this election a referendum on Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump wants it to be a referendum on Donald Trump because that's how he is built. And Hillary Clinton wants it to be a referendum on Donald Trump. And in that one enterprise, the two of them are essentially cooperating. Well, that's true because Donald Trump's ego is the only defining characteristic of Donald Trump that you can always rely on. His views will change moment to moment, but his self-regard is the centerpiece of his entire being. He will walk into that trap over and over and over again by making it all about him, by, by, by making these things part of his personal drama that he wants to play out again and again. And, you know, the, the question of the judges, it, it reminds me, Trump puts this list out that he, we, you know, he's never heard of any of these guys before. He got somebody to put a list together, Jeff Sessions or someone. But the fact of the matter is, if the behavior that he's exhibiting now, and, and if he makes this election all about him, we're not going to have a chance for any sort of possibility of a conservative justice because it's going to be Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer running the, the, the confirmation process, even if Trump were to win. So, he, you know, his, his constant bring it back to me problem is, is where Trump is very different from every other candidate who becomes mindful at some point that you have to tell Americans that you're talking to them. You're talking about them, their concerns, their issues, and not just make it, you know, build my golden statue 10 feet higher. So when you see the yeah. problem with that also in the interview that we just saw, which is Hillary Clinton did give a foreign policy speech that was a disaster. Her foreign policy has always been a disaster. Sure. Every decision she's made has been wrong, and yet that's not what we're talking about. You, he couldn't talk I, about I, that because I, I, he was I, stuck I, I, talking as, about Donald as a Trump. Critic, as, a, as a, a critic on the record avowed of numerous elements of the foreign policy, including what we're doing in Yemen, the Le Libyan intervention and its aftermath, um, I, 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 let me just interject to say I disagree with that characterization, but continue. <laughs> the point being that Republicans who have endorsed Donald Trump, who are down ballot, as Rick just said, um, have a problem because this is going to be a referendum on Donald Trump. Yep. And so every time Hillary offers, you know, huge opportunities, the IG report that came out showing that her email usage was egregious and a threat to our national security, her foreign policy speech, which should have highlighted all of her missteps on foreign policy but we're not talking would, about. Right. So then the, the point is that you would have to refer, you would have to respond to that with some sort of substantive engagement on Libya and its aftermath, right? You would have to respond to that some substantive engagement on Syria. You would have to respond with some substantive engagement of the refugee crisis and the nature of the EU and whether NATO could hang together in the face of 21st century threats, none of which is within the capability of the person that your party has nominated to be the President of the United States. Which is why he is not a Republican and doesn't represent the he, Republican Party. He is well. the Republican nominee. I hate to tell you, this. you guys don't get a say in the matter when he's the nominee. Sarah Isco for us, Rick Wilson, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. That was absolute classic. So, Donald Trump, the Adolf Hitler of the 2016 American election.